Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Vitater, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into this latest video. It's a very interesting video I've done here. I've actually performed the procedure using two different endoscopes. Um, so this is endoscope A, and at the end I've got images of both endoscopes side by side. And endoscope A is an endoscope that I, uh, during my research and development of developing the eye clear scope, I purchased this endoscope from China around six years ago. And um, the benefits of it was the length was quite short in the sense where um, some audiologists we were worried about when they look at the endoscope and the length of the rod lens system. Uh, this was a bit shorter than the average, it's four millimetres. I don't know if it still is, but back then it was. Um, however, the negatives of this particular endoscope, you can see it now, um, because it's shorter, I can't insert this further into, I'm really battling at the moment to put the endoscope further to get the view that I want of the eardrum and at the moment it's a bit blurry, I know the eardrum's just there, I can see a hint of blue and I actually had to stop the procedure, I didn't feel safe continuing, um, so I couldn't work very close. Now this is the eye clear scope in comparison, It's just, everything else is the same, I use the same iPod, I use the same light source, the only difference is I attached the eye clear scope endoscope and you can just see the difference, not only in brightness and clarity, but also the magnification. So although the previous endoscope, endoscope A, um, it was shorter in working length, that actually ended up being a negative. So uh, because it's shorter in length, it was less magnification, I couldn't insert it any further in the ear canal because it was taking up too much space and then it was also then impeding my right hand, which is the instrument hand. So the length of the endoscope, we call that working length, and sometimes you need a good length to enable the other hand to work, to work in front of it without both hands coming in contact, or the instrument and the endoscope in, in the ear coming in contact. And you can just see the vast difference. Um, so the eye clear scope, the working length is five centimeters, so 50 millimeters, whereas the other endoscope, I believe at the time, I don't know now, it was um, four centimeters, so 40 millimeters. And you'll see the size difference when I put them side by side on the table. And that's the last image. If you, if you keep, keep watching, you, uh, I'm gonna also perform the procedure in the left ear, but uh, so just using a fine end gauge and I'm just delicately removing wax now uh, from the inferior recess and the anterior recess as well. So these are little trenches, recesses near the eardrum created by the narrowing of the eardrum. So about a half a centimetre away from the ear canal, from the eardrum, I apologise, the ear canal narrows and it protrudes back outwards. And that narrowing and protrusion back outwards causes, creates recesses, trenches, craters all the way around the eardrum, but generally inferiorly, so at the base of the eardrum, and anteriorly. So anteriorly is the front part of the ear canal. So for the right ear, the front part of the ear canal is on the right hand side, but if it's the left ear, the anterior portion of the ear canal in the left ear is the left hand side. So it's just some dead keratin around the edges. I'm just gently peeling. So I hope that video was a great uh, illustration of the differences between endoscopes. Um, the other endoscope, I believe at the time, it's not autoclavable. So autoclavable enables uh, you to disinfect or sterilize the endoscope by using steam. It's a special steam cha chamber. And you normally autoclave it at around 134 degrees centigrade. Now, with our device, the eye clear scope, in between patients, we don't um, autoclave it. It's a long process. Um, but what we do, we use a high level chlorine dioxide disinfectant system and that's part of our user guide. So we've had to get all this compatibility tested. You just can't use these, um, these um, solutions and solvents uh, on any endoscope. It has to be part of your user guide. You have to get it compatibility tested. Now with the eye clear scope, um, our eye clear scope is autoclavable. So if you wanted to, we are able to um, put it in a steam chamber 134 degrees centigrade and sterilize it using steam. The fact it's autoclavable makes it also waterproof, so which enables us to use the chlorine dioxide uh, solution. So this chlorine dioxide solution, it's like a foam solution and then you wipe it all over the endoscope. Um, and it's extremely high level disinfectant and we've had it compatibility tested, but because our eye clear scope is autoclavable, i.e kind of steam proof, waterproof, we are able to use the solution. Whereas the other one, I don't believe was, uh, at the time of purchasing, it was five, six years ago, I don't know now. 
so quite often we see other endoscope devices on the market and we just look at it and we because we've done our research this is not the eye clear scope's not been made by accident it's 18 months of solid research to get where we were with this not not only in terms of the working length the, the, um, but the focus the field of view the magnification these are all individual factors that we had to kind of marry together and um, we spent a lot of money on certification as well um, getting it authorized we've done clinical trials on it as well and this device um, you get a lot of endos otter endoscopes that are CE mark this is but the eye clear scope is C mark specifically for the purpose of earwax removal and here's a uh, so side by side image so endoscope A is on the right hand side and you can see it's shorter the, the length the tip and the eye clear scope is to the left um, the endoscope you can see that the working length is a lot longer I hope you enjoyed that video guys and it was informative um, I hope you're all having a great evening take care bye